Hello, 3D printing friends. It's time once again for another Monoprice Mod Mondays on the BB3D channel. It's been a while since the last one, and I'm sorry about that, but I've had other things going on. But today, we are going to install a super, super quiet 12-volt knock to a fan on our Monoprice Maker Select Plus 3D printer. But, I can hear you saying, this is a 24-volt printer. How will we accomplish this daring feat? Well, stick around and I'll show you how. I'm Brian, and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. You know, in a previous episode, we installed a 24-volt 50-millimeter blower and uh, a printed EIII cooler duct to move air across the heat sink on the extruder. And while that's a fine way to push a ton of air, it's also kind of loud. Now, these blowers aren't the quietest air movers around, and when you consider they're running full blast the entire time the printer's on, well, as much as I'd like a good white noise generator, it was starting to get on my nerves. So, if 50 millimeter blowers are way up on the loud side of the spectrum, what's well, down on the quiet side? Well, that would be these fans made by Noctua. And these things are just amazingly quiet. I literally cannot hear them when they're running. So I decided I wanted to install one on the printer. Now that reverts the extruder's cooling system back to the stock configuration with a 40 millimeter fan blowing air across the heatsink. But it's an upgraded fan. It's a lot more reliable and a lot quieter. But there's a problem with installing a 40 millimeter knock to a fan on this printer. It's a 24 volt printer. Noctua makes their 40 by 40 by 10 millimeter fans in five volt and 12 volt varieties. They don't have a 24 volt fan in this size. So how do we work around this? Well. One way is to use a linear voltage regulator such as an LM7812. This can take up to 35 volts on the input and converts it to 12 volts. However, linear voltage regulators dissipate all that extra voltage as heat. And the last thing I wanted to do was have another heat sink on the system. So another option is to use something called a buck converter. A buck converter steps down the voltage while stepping up the current. These are small switch mode power converters. Because they're available from Amazon, you don't have to go to Toshi Station to pick them up. You can waste time with your friends later. Right now, we have a printer to mod. Okay, so like I said, these things are small. They're typically about 44 millimeters by 22 millimeters by about 14 millimeters thick. But where would you put it? I could mount it inside the printer body, but then I'd have to tap into the power supply and run a pair of wires all the way up and around and over to the extruder, and that would be kind of a pain. Another option is to find a place on the X carriage to mount it. Well, remember that TL Smoother mount I designed in the Smoother Than Ever video, where we installed a TL Smoother for the extruder stepper motor? It turns out that the footprint of this buck converter is about the same as a TL Smoother board. So I modified the design to include mounting points for the buck converter as well as designing a cover for it. And I printed it out, and I put it all together, and hey, what do you know, it worked! But guess what? After I did all that work modifying the smoother mount to include the mounting points and a cover for the buck converter and printed countless models to test the fit and got everything just perfect and installed and ready to do a video, then someone goes and makes a new buck converter with a footprint that's literally smaller than a postage stamp. See this itty bitty thing? Well heck, so now what? Well suddenly I got this bright idea. This new converter's so small, it should be able to mount just about anywhere on the X carriage. And one thing I hadn't made yet was a fan grill to prevent stray fingers or screwdrivers from contacting the fan blades and breaking them off. So I thought maybe, maybe, they can be mounted on the fan grill itself. This would cut down on the wiring because we can just use the connector from the existing cooling solution to feed 24 volts into the buck converter, and we already know it'll reach. And the fan grill can be made to snap onto the fan so it sort of becomes one module, and then we can cut the wires short on the fan and directly solder them to the buck converter, and yeah, yeah, this could work. So a long time ago, probably about a year ago, way back at the beginning of my 3D printing journey, I bought a 40 millimeter knock to a fan and stuck it on the printer in place of the stock fan. Now keep in mind, this was back before I was aware that the printer was pushing 24 volts to the original fan and that the knock to it was a 12 volt fan. It was quieter than the stock fan, but not as whisper quiet as I'd been expecting. And then naturally, this is to be expected when you're pushing twice the rated voltage through a motor, right? So that's when I switched to using a blower and the EIII cooler. But before I made that switch, I heavily modified a fan grill that I found on Thingiverse. On mine, I changed from a circular grill to a hexagonal grill and made a few other changes. And this is only ever for my own personal use, and so I never released it as a remix. Frankly, I didn't think anyone would want it. Now, though, I have a reason to revisit that fan grill. It's one of the first things I ever did in Tinkercad, so it was way back on page nine of my Tinkercad designs. Now, I'm not gonna go over the way I designed it at Tinkercad because, well, a year ago, I barely knew what I was doing, and it was just so awful. But I will show you the finished product and explain why it is the way it is. And after that, we'll cover how to get the buck converter connected, adjusted, and mounted in this solution. 
I've got a link in the description to the finished design on Thingiverse as well as links to the teeny, teeny, tiny, tiny buck converter, so small, on Amazon. For now, back to the fan grill and buck converter mount. This prints is three parts so that we don't have to use supports. The first part is the buck converter mount itself. It's really nothing more than just a simple box with a little bit of a chamfer applied to the edges and some cutouts on the front and the back for the wires to pass through. There's also two little holes, and I'll show you what those are for in just a bit. The second part is the lid for the buck converter mount, and this is just a press fit part. You should just snap it in, and it should stay put. If it doesn't, a couple of drops of CA glue on opposite corners should take care of it. The third part is the fan grill itself. Now, the Noctua fans are designed with little recesses to accommodate clips, and so along the sides of the grill, we have some clips that will snap onto the Noctua fan. The next thing to point out is that the hexagonal mesh is not right up against the fan blades. There's about a four millimeter gap. I did that because I noticed that when the grill is real close to the fan blades, it makes the fan louder. I don't know if it's just turbulence from the blades as they move past the grill or what, but I found that moving the mesh away from the blades, even just a few millimeters, would significantly diminish the noise, hence the air gap. Down here, we have some pass-through holes for the long screws that hold the fan, heat sink, cooling block, and stepper motor together. Remember, this grill is gonna stay on the fan forever. Forever. It's like a remora. Lastly, there are two little holes on the top. These line up with the holes in the buck converter box. So what are they for? Screws? Nope. If you've ever built a plastic model kit, you'll remember that mating parts typically have a pin and a hole for alignment, and that's what's going on here. But, you say, this is just holes, no pins, and that's very observant of you. Here's the deal. These holes are designed to accommodate 1.75 millimeter filament. That's right, we're gonna use scrap filament to make the pins. So let's get these filament bits glued into the fan grill first. One little drop of CA glue on the hole and then insert the filament scrap into the hole, but only insert it until it's flush with the inside of the fan grill. And we'll go ahead and do the other one. And again, it's just one little drop of CA glue right there on the hole. And in goes the filament. Now we're gonna let that dry for a second. And now that that's dried, we're gonna take these and trim them off so that they're only about two millimeters high. So we're just gonna snip these off at about two millimeters, maybe three. There, now we have pins. We're gonna test to make sure everything lines up with the holes on the butt converter box. And it does. So now we're gonna glue the box in place. We're just going to put a little bit of CA glue across here. Now, note that the box is designed to hang over the open part of the grill. When we get everything assembled and installed, this box is going to sit over the fan and then a little bit over the heat sink. In other words, it pretty much stays out of the way. I'm going to set this aside for a little bit and let that CA glue cure. One thing that we might want to do after that CA glue has cured is just trim these little pins off so that they're sitting flush with the inside of the box. We don't want them to be in the way of the buck converter. There we go, everything's nice and smooth. Well now let's work on getting the buck converter wired up. Well, the first thing we need to be able to do is get power into the buck converter. And you can crimp a new connector onto a pair of wires or you can cut the connector off of an old fan. I chose to cut the connector off of an old fan because I didn't feel like crimping wires. They're a pain sometimes, but I'll do it if I have to. Regardless of how you come about the connector, you need to make sure that the leads are at least 10 centimeters long. More is okay because you can always cut it down to size. And also, you need to make sure that the red or positive lead is here on the connector and the black or negative lead is here. If you need to switch them around, use something small and pointy to press the tab on the metal contact and slide it out of the plastic connector. Then put it back in in the correct orientation. 
Well, now that we're sure that the positive and negative leads are in the right place on the connector, we need to get it soldered onto the buck converter. If you check the underside of the buck converter, it's very clear about how things are to be connected. Inputs and outputs, positive and negative, these are clearly marked. So strip a couple of millimeters of insulation from the black and red leads, tin them, and then solder the black lead to the N minus position on the buck converter and solder the red lead to the N plus position. We'll finish soldering in a minute, but first we need to get this plugged into the printer and adjusted so that it's outputting 12 volts. And here's how to perform that adjustment. First, unplug the printer. Also unplug its USB cable if it's plugged in. Then remove the metal cover from the back of the X carriage where the ribbon cable plugs in. And you may need to unplug the ribbon cable to do this. Unplug the existing extruder fan. It's plugged into this port right here. Now plug the buck converter into that particular port. Plug the ribbon cable back into the breakout board on the X carriage if you unplugged it. Now turn the printer on. It should be sending 24 volts into the buck converter. Measure the output voltage with a multimeter. I used clips to connect my meter to the buck converter so I could see the value while I was adjusting it. Using a small screwdriver, adjust the output voltage until it reads as close as possible to 12 volts. Then turn off the printer. Now unplug the buck converter from the fan port and we can finish soldering. Let's get the Noctua fan and get to work. On the Noctua fan, you'll notice that it has three leads, red, black, and yellow. We're using the fan in a two-wire configuration, so we aren't going to use the yellow lead at all. But we need to cut the Noctua's leads to a length of about 35 or 40 millimeters. And once you've done that, strip a couple of millimeters of insulation from the end of the red and the black leads and then tin them. Then solder the red lead to the out plus position and the black lead to the out minus position on the buck converter. Now trim the leads that are poking through the input and output holes on the underside of the buck converter so that they're as short as possible. Now you can put your soldering equipment away because we're done melting metal alloys for this project. Now let's get finished up. Remove the old fan or whatever cooling solution you've installed on the extruder's heatsink. And then we're gonna install the knock to a fan. To orient the fan properly, the wire should come out of the top of the fan and the label side of the fan goes toward the heatsink. Insert the long screws onto the two bottom holes on the knock to a fan. Then slide the two spacers from the stock configuration onto the screws. Slide the heatsink onto the screws. And then screw this assembly through the cooling block to the extruder stepper motor. Now that you have the Noctua fan installed on the extruder, snap the grill onto the fan. Next, plug the buck converter's power leads into the extruder fan connector on the X-carriage breakout board. Before we go any further, turn the printer on and visually confirm that the fan starts spinning. If it does, let's proceed. If it doesn't, check your wiring and test again. Turn the printer off again, then reinstall the cover on the X-carriage breakout board. We're almost done. Get a small piece of double-sided foam tape, also known as servo tape. It doesn't need to be very big. This is just to keep the buck converter from rattling around inside the mounting box. Apply the tape to the bottom center of the box, then stick the buck converter down onto it. The power input lead should go out the back of the box and the fans leads should go out the front of the box. Gather up any excess wire going to the fan and store it inside the box. This will give a neat appearance. Then snap the lid onto the box. It should just press into place, but if it doesn't want to stay put, a tiny drop of CA glue in opposite corners should do the trick. And that's it. You're done. You now have a much quieter, more reliable fan. You know, it's funny how technology just keeps on getting smaller. It's a good thing, but sometimes it means I have to rethink or redo what I'm working on for the Mod Monday series. And that said, this design can be modified to suit other printers that use 40 millimeter fans, so even if you don't have a printer like this one, you can still use these little buck converters if you need to run a 12 volt fan on a 24 volt printer. You could also take this a little further. There are extra solder pads on the output side, so you could also drive a small number of 12 volt LEDs if you wanted to have some extra illumination on the nozzle. If you've done the rear mounted Cobra cooler mod, you can put a little LED strip on the mounting bracket to tell the original parts cooling fan. Anyway, check the description for links. There's a link to the models on Thingiverse, a link to the buck converters and Noctua fans on Amazon. And these are non-affiliate links. I'm not that sophisticated yet, maybe someday. Well, if you managed to make it this far, I thank you. 
I have fun doing the designs, research, and making these videos for you, so I hope you enjoyed this one. You probably guessed this is the part of the video where I say like, subscribe, and share, because doing these three things really does help the channel, and it only takes a second. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but either way, please leave your thoughts in the comments. If you'd like to support the channel with a one-time micropayment, you could buy me a coffee or leave a little something in the PayPal tip jar. Links for both are down in the description. Well, I guess that about wraps things up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so by clicking the BV3D icon right over here and ring that bell to be notified when I release new videos. Oh, speaking of videos, here's one YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Well, now that the printer's a little quieter, I think I'm going to go print something cool. You should print something cool, too. I'll see you next time.